Silk fabrics work wonderfully with stained glass patchwork. The sheen on the fabrics makes them glow when they're outlined with the bias binding. When I stitched this fuchsia design, I picked acid pink and purple silks because they had the colour brilliance that I wanted for these exotic flowers. I've experimented with various kinds of silk and I found that Dupion works best. It's firmer and slightly thicker than some other woven silks and it's not too sheer. Like most other silk fabrics though, it does fray badly so I've developed a way of using it in stained glass patchwork that minimises the problem of fraying and that's what I want to show you here. I've drawn out my full size pattern and cut it up to use as templates in the usual way. Pin the template onto the silk just as you usually do but instead of cutting the silk exactly along the edge of the template add a couple of millimetres, maybe a very scant quarter of an inch, just outside the template. You don't need to be too exact you're not actually adding a seam allowance, you're just giving yourself a little overlap. Once you've cut out all the patches, lay them on your wadding or foundation fabric, you'll find that the patches all overlap each other slightly. Fidget them around so that the patches and the overlaps look even. If you have a choice, lay a darker fabric over any lighter ones to avoid darker fabrics showing through on the surface. Once all your patches are in the right place, pin them in position then set your sewing machine to a medium width zigzag and stitch along the raw edges between the patches. Begin with the T-junctions as usual, then work your way through the longer lines. This stitching secures the raw edges and stops them from fraying while you're working. It also means that the patches can't slowly fray and pull out from under the binding after the piece is completed. An extra bonus is that the zigzagging holds all the patches in place while you add the binding. Once all the patches are secure, you can go on and add your bias binding just as usual. Here's how the finished block looks with all the bias binding lines added. This is a technique which you can use for other slippery fabrics such as satin too. It also works well for very large projects when you don't want the entire piece covered with pins but don't want to have to tackle the patches either. Because of the way this technique works, you really can use virtually any fabric for stained glass patchwork, but some fabrics present particular challenges and it's worth knowing some tips to help you get the very best out of them. In this section we're going to look at fabrics which have a pile or a heavy texture, fabrics which fray badly, satins and other slippery customers, and sheer fabrics and lace. Some synthetic fabrics are firm, closely woven and stable and don't need any special handling at all. I've used lots of fabrics like these ones in stained glass patchwork projects, treating them just the same way as cottons. Plasticised fabrics are great fun and they have the extra advantage of not fraying because the plastic layer bonds them. You do need to be careful with the iron though as it's easy to melt the plastic. The different types of plasticised fabric behave very differently. Cut a little sample and try the very tip of the iron on it. If that doesn't give very good results, try pressing from the back or have a go using a Teflon sheet between the iron and the fabric. Some fabrics have a pile or a heavy texture, such as these velvets, corduroys, fur fabrics and thick laces. I used a dark imitation suede with a lovely furry texture for the bulrushes on this kingfisher design. 